Welcome back into Fox with a live. We're giving you a live look into one of those cameras just outside of Kodiak Island, Akihak, uh, Alaska. Of course, we do have a large earthquake that was uh, registered a 7.3 magnitude earthquake 1237 local time it's been about an hour and a half since then we had a tsunami warning initially that has now been a tsunami advisory concerns about what the waves could be like and a lot of questions that we have ahead we do have a specialist an expert that's on standby is going to talk to us by phone Ian Oliver is sticking around uh, talking he has been diving deep into this analysis of what's been ongoing for these areas um, just outside of Sandpoint so here's where we stand this is what we know as of right now what we were talking about that earthquake a, a large earthquake 7.3 magnitude there's a local time they are four hours behind us here on the east coast so we're coming to you here at 6 p.m and this happened roughly 4 37 p.m alaskan time so as i said about an hour and a half removed from this what we were looking at was an anticipation how fast was the arrival time of this tsunami if there was one and this was anticipated to have made that impact 30 minutes ago to this spot sandpoint we did not see a wave and so what we saw actually was a downgrade from the warning to a tsunami advisor We're still saying hey there could be some waves that are dangerous and that is something that if you are in that alert area or that advisory now you want to get to higher ground you want to move inland and if you're out on the water you want to make sure you're getting that boat further out into the water at least 180 feet deep. We're going to dive into everything that we're learning here at the Fox Weather Forecast Center. I will tell you this, in an event like this, earthquakes and tsunami, there is a latency factor. There is a, a delay with that information that gets relayed. When we do get it to us here, we will break in and continue to get you that information. What we can't tell you as of right now is the maximum magnitude is this one you see here, a 7.3, but there's been a number of aftershocks or other reports coming in with 12 different reports. Now, when you're looking at one this large with an earthquake, notice where it falls on the Richter scale and where that's categorized as major. So major damage into populated areas. You think about Kodiak, that is a large island. At the time, in that advisory, we had over 60,000 people in that. And so that was the immediate concern, the close proximity to lands, 50 miles or less. Uh, you're worried about, OK, how quickly all of this could unfold for those there in Alaska. So this is where we are right now. Of course, as I mentioned, Ian Oliver, he's sticking around to kind of unpack all of this. You were in the middle of your yeah. show tracking severe weather, tracking tropical systems. And lo and behold, this tsunami Warning right. came out. And, I, and I'm thinking more about this. I'm very much looking forward to speaking with uh, one of the state seismologists from Alaska coming up in just yeah. a few minutes. You got to give the the, 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 tight, the tsunami warning center a bit of grace here because you were just pointing this out. Earthquake occurs, major earthquake, yep. more than a magnitude seven in this case. It's not like this is a severe thunderstorm mm -hmm. that you can just scan it with a radar and say, that's where it's dangerous. Yeah. There's a lot that's unclear. And with this proximity, as you were just showing us, uh, these earthquakes start happening. You have to get the tsunami warning out yeah. in case there's a, a life-threatening one uh, to get these people some notice. So you're yeah. wondering, hey, why is it, it was a warning? Now it's an advisory. These are complicated scenarios, and, and they're, they're never the same. All earthquakes oh, sure. and, and how the actual earth moves they're all different. That's what our guests are really going to dive into yeah. is, is what type uh, of earthquake was this. But to what you were saying, too, if you get to that to your phone, 7.3 magnitude earthquake, I mean, your action plan and what you're doing is different it's than a tsunami war. Right. Right. Yeah. Because an earthquake, you're not trying to get to higher ground. Of course not. Because that means there could be some obviously collapsing. Yeah. You're trying to seek shelter and get everything you can to protect yourself. Tsunami, completely different. You're trying to go inland and run to higher ground. And why that messaging can be difficult at times. And as you said, it's imperative to make sure you get the warning out so people are aware and taking it seriously. And then you can downgrade it once you're getting that information that's coming in. Right. And, and folks might be saying, hey, you, you know, where are some of these reports? Alaska, its its natural beauty is stunning. It's got to be one of the most beautiful places in this entire country. But you said it, this giant swath, this is hundreds of miles that we're talking about, down the Aleutians, up to Kodiak, up to Homer, almost to Anchorage. This whole tsunami advisory, whole thing, only has 60,000 people on it. Kodiak, giant island, I've been saying it because you look at this map and there's no scale, there's no context. Kodiak is the size of the state of Maine. 
It's yeah. huge. Yeah, that's and wild. And it, it's got villages on it, one city, Kodiak. It's got a little bit more than 5,000 people. So it's the middle yeah. of the day, and it's only along the immediate coastline. We have not detected, though, as we were talking about, Greg Diamond reported that from the Fox Forecast Center, any of the water rise in Sandpoint where it's forecast to B, it should have been 20 minutes ago. Yeah, this is just right around five feet is what we have seen. And as we had said, that's the current wave height. That is not saying atypical above what we would see as well. So a lot to dive into here, right? And you have experience when fishing out there, but we thankfully have the state seismologist out of Alaska with the earthquake center that's on the phone with us, Michael West. Thank you for being with us here to kind of unpack everything that we are seeing right now. Can you walk us through what has unfolded over the last hour and a half with this 7.3 magnitude earthquake. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the time. It's been a busy a few hours for sure. Yeah, magnitude yeah. 7.3 uh, earthquake in a, uh, an area that has been quite active over the last uh, few years. And uh, you, you've already been speaking about the tsunami warning that went out. Uh, early signs suggest that, uh, that that tsunami did not materialize into something uh, truly impactful, but that is always a part of uh, what can happen with these events. Yeah, and, and how long is that period of time? Because earthquake happens, you, you're, you're working mm -hmm. to assess what kind of, of fault this was. Warning goes out because you have to let people know this is possible, a big earthquake just happened. What are those moments immediately following an earthquake like this like as you're trying to figure out, decipher what exactly just happened? Well, they're real busy, right? In a few hours and tomorrow, we'll be able to speak with a whole lot more detail than, uh, you know, when things are in unfolding. And really, the data is still rolling in, whether that's seismic data or data from, uh, you know, that the Tsunami Warning Center, part of NOAA, is getting through their buoys and whatnot. I mean, that data is still happening. Right. And, and that's one component, right? The tsunami, you're a, some, a seismologist, of course, uh, Michael. So when we're talking about this, it's the fault line, right? This is something, Ian, you were diving into, and we were showing with this the anatomy of tsunami. That matter. I mean, that's a big component in this. Can you kind of give us an insight of what the ocean floor looks like there just off of Sand Point? I mean, the, the entire southern coast of Alaska is a gigantic earthquake zone. Four out of five earthquakes in the United States happen in Alaska. Wow, wow. Now, a lot of those are not necessarily impactful. You were talking about population uh, before and whatnot. But, you know, these are popping off all the time. So the southern coast of Alaska is where two tectonic plates collide. It's one of the biggest collision zones uh, on the planet. And so earthquakes are, uh, you know, earthquakes of this size are, are relatively common. But re I need to remind folks that we on occasion have much, much, much more significant, you know, some of the largest earthquakes on Earth. And we have had in our history um, absolutely devastating tsunamis. And, and when you talk about this, Michael, real quickly, where does this rank that you have so many with this frequency of these earthquakes? I mean, a magnitude 7.3, that seems really high for us. Here, what is that for when you're looking at uh, what you've seen recently? No, no, it's still super important. Okay. Um, it is true that it is not unique uh, and that there have been some of these in recent years, but it all depends on where and when it is, right? If it, you put that same earthquake underneath a community, and you right. have a very different impact. Yeah. You put that closer to the seafloor so it generates a bigger tsunami, all of a sudden you've got a problem across the whole Pacific Ocean. And, and quickly, before we let you go, Dr. West, I, I was just wondering more about that. Is that more dictated, uh, not just the depth of the earthquake, but the, the kind of earthquake? I mean, we've seen in the past mm -hmm. earthquakes of this magnitude that are uh, strike slip and they don't generate a tsunami. Is that the type of scenario that this potentially may have been? Uh, that's exactly right. Early signs suggest that this was not the style of earthquake that would generate as big a wave as as could be as you could get from an earthquake this size. So we got we got early signs suggest we're on the lucky side today. Great. And as you had said, more information to be pouring in. May want to stay in tune with Dr. Michael West, state seismologist with Alaska Earthquake Center. Thank you so much for jumping on the phone call and talking with us here on Fox Weather. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Ian, for sticking around. Yeah, no question. Kind of going throughout this entire event. He really yeah. gave a lot of context yeah. to that as far as these are not like other weather alerts where the warning comes yeah. out, it's downgraded. A little bit more into the mindset of what it's like 
in the minutes immediately following an event like this. And you could kind of hear in his voice. He's yeah. still saying, hey, look, like there's a lot that's coming in. Yeah. We're going to need time to debrief and assess all of that's going to come in. The coordination with seismologists, NOAA, their buoys, there's a lot to talk about.